in the first of our Common Audio Myths videos, and I said in the first video that uh, I'd like to make this an ongoing series, we talked about woofers and how woofer size, you know, does it actually mean bigger woofer, bigger bass, or more bass? And we dispelled that common myth. Today we're going to shift to the other end of the speaker spectrum and talk about tweeters. Now, this may be one of the most controversial and misunderstood topics about loudspeakers out there. Uh, I suspect there's going to be lots of comments about people telling me I don't know what I'm talking about, but I've been in this industry over 24 years now. Uh, I've had a lot of experience, and I don't know where this idea came from. It's almost like it's a you know mentality that, that somebody made a comment uh, years and years ago about this topic, and you know, it's just spread and it's, it's deeply ingrained in people, in, in, in audiophiles that may otherwise, you know, uh, look to science, look to some sort of support for arguing one side or the other. So enough about that. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about metal dome tweeters versus soft dome tweeters. And I hear this not only from customers or potential customers calling and asking questions about our products and the tweeter material, but I see this discussed all the time. I don't like metal dome tweeters because they sound harsh and brittle and metallic. Or I prefer soft dome tweeters because they sound smoother, as if how hard, how stiff, or the type of material has anything to do with how necessarily that tweeter is going to sound or perform in a loudspeaker. It's complete, absolute bunk and nonsense. Now, let me stop the people right away starting crazily writing going, oh my God, he's, he's nuts, I know what I hear, blah, 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 blah. I'm not disagreeing with what people hear. Don't get me wrong. I'm also not saying that materials can sound different in all loudspeaker drivers. They're part of and they are the radiating surface. So of course differences can lend to differences in sounds. What I want to dispel is the notion of a blanket statement saying that a metal dome tweeter is always going to sound harsher and brighter than a soft dome tweeter. because it is really complete nonsense. It's like anything else. A well-designed tweeter along with a well-designed loudspeaker system, and remember we have to filter out the base frequencies with a crossover network so we don't burn the tweeter out because it's not designed to produce low frequencies or move very much. So when you've got a well-designed tweeter and a well-designed system, Really, you can make a soft dome tweeter and a metal dome tweeter or a hard dome tweeter sound good if they're good uh, tweeters and well designed and you deal with the crossover and the system correctly. Now, I'll give you an example. I tried this experiment about 15 years ago because I started, you know, hearing this, this crept up from some dealers. Uh, you know, people saying, oh, well, you guys use Metal Dome tweeters. This was at another company, not Axiom, but it doesn't matter. Metal Dome tweeters, they always sound bright, bright. They sound harsh. Well, these dealers were going to be visiting and doing some listening, visiting our factory. So I decided to do an experiment. I took a good quality soft dome tweeter and one of our great Metal Dome tweeters that we were using at the time, and I made two identical pairs of little two-way six and a half inch woofer bookshelf speakers. And I purposely designed the crossovers so that the soft dome tweeter would have a little bit of lift and brightness at the top end. And I made the balance of the metal dome tweeter neutral as you normally would. And in the listening test, which was done totally blind, people didn't know what they were listening to, the soft dome tweeter was the one that was said to be bright and spitty and harsh sounding. Now, 
again, I'm not saying in, in the wrong hands with wrong designs or not paying attention to the characteristics of a different tweeter, despite what material it might be, any tweeter can be made to sound bad, okay? So what is, you know, why, why do people have this hang up and say that the material, you know, it's soft or, or metal dome, and, and I'll throw in there is that there are other types of materials uh, other than metal and a, and a soft dome, and even soft domes can be made of different materials. They can be made of synthetic fabrics, natural fabrics, and I can actually, by coating uh, a soft dome tweeter made of a fabric material, I can actually make it as stiff and as hard as a metal dome tweeter, okay? Uh, but there are other things, there are different plastics and polycarbonates and things that are used for, for tweeters and, and really the sky's the limit. So, so what does it really come down to? I think that where people are hung up is that they think that uh, metal dome tweeters tend to have fundamental resonances. That's some frequencies that they will almost uncontrollably vibrate, a natural resonance, like a, like a tuning fork, for instance. And they tend to be, on a good metal dome tweeter, very high in frequency. Some would argue above the audible frequency band, or above 20,000 hertz, which is the limit uh, of what people can hear. Now, I'm not talking about perception, and I'm not talking about how those frequencies can interfere with audible frequencies. I'm not going to go into that sort of textbook level detail right now. But the fundamental issue is because that resonance tends to be uh, very high, it's a very sharp resonance, it's very concentrated usually in a small band, but it's outside of the audible range. Uh, people will happily, you know, look at raw tweeter measurements with no compensating waveguide or phase plug or anything like that on it, and they'll see a spike in the response at 24,000 hertz or something, for example, and declare, well, that, that resonance is why metal dome tweeters sound metallic and sound harsh. And then they'll point to the soft dome tweeter, which will probably not have that sort of spike resonance, okay? Well, again, we deal with that. We deal with that through the acoustic parts of the, of the tweeter. Uh, we have waveguides, we have phase plugs, we have compensation that can be done in the crossover network. There's all kinds of things that we can deal with that peak. Now, I'm gonna turn the tables for a second and say, well, the soft dome has got just as bad problems in most cases. One thing is that it's not as pistonic because it's a soft material. And by pistonic, I mean at all frequencies, ideally, we'd like the entire tweeter dome to move in a uniform fashion and the entire dome to move at all frequencies. The reality is that that's not the case. That's not what happens. And if you looked at actual laser imaging of a moving tweeter, you would see at different frequencies that it starts to bend right? That there are many, many nodes and bending modes that happen in the dome itself at different frequencies. Now, that's for any material. Doesn't matter. You could make the stiffest, hardest material on the planet and it will still have these resonant or bending modes. The difference, though, is that on a metal dome tweeter, they tend to be uh, less extreme and they tend to be at higher frequencies because of the stiffer material. And they tend to, a lot of them, be outside the audible listening range, okay? So if we go now to our soft dome tweeter, it will tend to actually have much more severe modes, and there'll be more bending going on at different frequencies. Now, these don't cause really sharp peaks and valleys like they may in a harder material, like, like the metal dome, but remember I said that those typically are above 20,000 hertz. So all of those bending modes, they are going to impact the amplitude response, and they will impact it differently depending on how loud the system is playing. 
So that's one big thing to consider here is that even though I can show you a, you know, a static on-axis measurement of the tweeter and maybe, maybe the soft dome measures more linearly, uh, as I drive it harder and harder, that may change. And if I actually look at things like distortion of uh, two different dome types, or I start looking at time decay or waterfall graphs showing how different frequency bands decay, or the dome actually stops reproducing those frequencies after uh, the signal is cut off, they can tell you a lot about the characteristics of the tweeter. But in anything else, like everything else, in any sort of loudspeaker or acoustic design, there, is, there are trade-offs, okay? And those trade-offs have to be dealt with. And a good engineer will make the proper trade-off depending on what goal they're trying to achieve. Now, one thing that I will say is a huge benefit of a metal dome tweeter over a soft dome tweeter, which often doesn't get talked about in this debate of, you know, smooth versus metallic sounding, um, is power handling. Because the uh, voice coil, and I'm not sure if you can see this here, the voice coil is connected directly to an aluminum former that it's wound on, which is now directly bonded to the metal, in this case, titanium dome. That entire thing is acting as a heat sink and is able to pull heat away from the voice coil and dissipate it by using the dome surface itself. That's not going to be the case, at least not to the extent of a metal dome, with a soft fabric dome tweeter. So it's a benefit because it means less distortion at high levels and better power handling. And it's one of the trade-offs that we may as loudspeaker designers say, yeah, that's exactly why I want to pick a metal dome because I need this speaker to handle a lot of power without burning tweeters out. So I hope that gave you a little bit of insight and I hope I wasn't too technical in all the discussion of modes and distortions and, and things like that. But just understand, it's like anything else. Don't judge simply by looking at a speaker and saying, oh, it has a soft dome tweeter, so it's going to sound soft, and I like a brighter sound. Or I don't want to even bother listening to that speaker because it has a metal dome tweeter, and I hate how bright and fuzzy and metallic they sound. That's not it at all. A well-designed designed loudspeaker could use either or some other material a well-designed loudspeaker is, at the end of the day, simply a well-designed loudspeaker. And a good engineer will know how to deal with balancing their different, uh, different problems and different issues that they may find with different tweeters. So thank you a lot for watching. And again, in the comments below, if there's another audio myth you'd like the, me to cover, please uh, mention it, and we'll try and take care of it in a future video. Thanks for watching. <music>